Ryan from Fairly Awesome Podcast. Joining me this week for episode 24 is Chris Keen. Hey guys. Staunton Wade. Hello. Nate Bushing. What's going on? And we have a special guest with us today, Kyle Wetland. Howdy. All right, so we've got uh, three topics that I think we can go a little while on. So I think we're going to stick to that as opposed to go to a fourth topic. But uh, episode 24, been been doing this for a while. Jack right? Bauer. Jack, this same. is the power hour. It's also right going to come in this podcast. There's, there's actually, we're actually doing Damn it. 24 mini podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just string them together. Boop. Right. Now we're going to get sued. Thanks, uh, Nate. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Very much. Effect. Fair use. Less than 15 <laughs> seconds. The, the, tone was, the tone was off, so it was, okay. was okay. We don't have to pay. Yeah, that was a parody. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. I thought we were doing the Vanilla Ice Queen comparison. Oh, There's okay. that extra. Yeah, yeah. ding, 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 diddling. Ting, ting, ding, ding, ding. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Right. So, all right. The, the first topic we're going to talk about is gamers seem to have double standards. Not that that was really a big shock to anybody, but really? yeah, yeah, like there's some stuff that that has happened not not just recently. It'll be one of the things we talk about. But for example, the uh, the Xbox Live, uh, the always on requirement for Xbox Live, or the the Xbox and and what was first coming out and how they got lambasted when they said it was going to have to be always on for your your licensing and whatnot. Right. And they got annihilated for it. Like, so many people came out of the word work saying, uh, I don't connect mine to the internet. You know, why do I want it always on? Right. It honestly lost them a majority of the gamer mind share, if you will. In the why beginning, yeah. Yeah, in the beginning. So then, Chris, I don't want to totally steal thunder here. So do you want to yeah. drive this <clears throat> point home? Sure. So, so everybody pretty much shit themselves because <laughs> Xbox One needs to be online. And then... Last couple weeks, PlayStation Now has started to make an appearance. And outside of the terrible pricing structure, which we could probably have a whole other topic on, <laughs> yeah. is basically because it's game streaming, is going to require you to be online to play the game. So everybody's all interested in PlayStation Now because, hey, you can play all your old PlayStation games. It's like backwards compatibility, but it's not exactly the same thing, but it's kind of the same thing. Your, your game system has to be online to play the games. And... It doesn't make any sense. It's something similar to gamers having a double standard as far as uh, what would be considered originality in a franchise. You look at something like Call of Duty, where you could make the argument it's the same game over and over and over again. And everybody Slightly does, improved graphics. Kind of it kind of really thing. is. It kind of, everybody does kind of make it's that argument. It's whack-a-mole. Right. But then everybody, you know, falls all over themselves saying how great... Mario Kart is. It is a veritable jizz factory when Mario Kart comes out. <laughs> yes. When the next Mario Kart comes I like to edit that when anything Nintendo comes out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There is quite a bit of a uh, raging boner. Uh, anything game. Mario related coming out. Like I said, anything Nintendo. Oh! <laughs> oh! I'm sorry. <laughs> What's that new Zelda? Same mechanics? Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> we get to go to eight dungeons yeah, and, and get lots of crystals? All right. And I don't mean... I mean, my take on this is okay. People can have double standards. You know, it's not like it. It's not like gaming is the only thing that has that. But I mean, be a little bit realistic about some of this stuff. If you just like to like everything that Nintendo puts out, just declare yourself a Nintendo fanatic. Or if you like everything that Sony puts out, declare yeah. yourself a Sony fanatic. You know, mm -hmm. that's fine. There's you know a place in the world for all of that. Um, but yeah, agreed. Like the the always on connection. In fact, it was totally repealed. Right, you can mm. you can now run your Xbox One <clears throat> online, offline, whatever you want, yeah. and you can still do digital licenses. There was that like hard switch they had to find, right? To flip. It's, it's a little yeah. <laughs> right. That software update that they just yeah. released after. Yeah. I, I, so, oh, go ahead. No. <laughs> wow, Jinx. Yes, we can <laughs> yeah, we can make out. <laughs> and we're doing it now because no, nobody we're knows. Ah, we're both. <laughs> you can't see oh. it, but it's hat. Well, I was gonna say part of the. Uh... <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> wow, man, that's that's <laughs> awful. That's awful. Uh, so part of part of the reason I think people are all right with it is because it's not really required, right? You don't have to buy PlayStation Now to have a uh, to have a PlayStation or play any of the games. So I mean, if you want to use a streaming service, yes. Now, but, when you say play any of the games, you, you yeah, caveat. Okay, to that. okay, anything that's not in the streaming service, right? I mean, if you have and any game that's not multiplayer only. Right. 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 
Same same with Xbox though, right? Yeah, you sure. You can play yeah. offline. But if you want to play, say, Battlefield or uh, Titanfall, you've got to have Xbox Live and Gold membership. Well, actually, you can play offline in those. It's just in not, Titanfall. Not you can't Titanfall. play. You can't play. Uh, you can't uh, play multiplayer. multiplayer. You're right. You're right. I can tie do the training mode. Yeah, you, you, that's, <laughs> over true. And over and over. that's true. Maybe that's true. You can't even get to the loading screen with no, PlayStation now without online. Server. Yeah, yeah, I think on on uh, Titanfall you have to actually connect to the server, the oh, EA you might, server. You might yeah. have to. Order again. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's I don't a good, have point. That problem, yeah. good point. Double standard, well, damn it. Yeah, we all well, pay because <laughs> yeah, this is it's, there is definitely uh, there's a, it's I wouldn't even call it a double standard as much as call it us versus them mentality, which is totally unnecessary, but I think completely encouraged by. All the marketing parties involved. Oh, yeah. Like, absolutely, this generation, no question, Sony did the, like, hate Xbox marketing. It was like WWE. It was, it was, yeah. it was, I mean, it was effective. <laughs> yeah. If nothing yeah. else, it was yeah. effective. So, I, it, but I think that Xbox, uh, like, right now, Xbox is coming out with a new set of ads that's kind of like the underdog, like, like, we're going to come back. Like, watch us come back. Everyone loves an underdog. Mm-hmm. So, like, they're trying to bring their fan base, like, uh, I, I want to say, um, Kind of hype them up, make Rally them excited. Them, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Bring bring it back where they need to be. So <laughs> this, again, with the Call of Duty thing, that still sells like a million units every generation that of that game. Yeah. So obviously, there's plenty of Call of Duty fans out there that are perfectly <clears throat> excited to play the game that just don't feel the need to attack the people that are attacking their game. Although maybe then again, maybe they do. You know, maybe we just don't hear about it. But there's yeah. there, there there is like an internet meme of one thing is good, another thing is bad. It's and, small... and I don't know how that happens. Yeah. I haven't quite figured it out. But there is a very clear I blame 4chan. Vocal, uh, vocal minority. Yeah, very very clear group of people that are able to move opinion yep. in favor or against something very easily. And then there's a silent Similar majority. Similar morality. Yeah, I mean, when something goes viral, yep. once that yes. feeling starts exactly. to be that way, it just builds and builds and yeah, builds. Yeah, but that yeah. silent majority still goes out and purchases Call of Duty and the millions of, of so that, copies that, of it. No, that's the question, because yeah. obviously this uh, generation, we have sales figures to prove that damage was done to Xbox. Xbox had sold at least as many units as PS... Xbox 360 had sold at least as many units as PS3, and I think more domestically. Yeah. But now they are getting their butts kicked by PlayStation by a million. Well, yeah, at least a million units domestically. Yep. And I think it's entirely because of the marketing. I agree. Uh, Because, quite frankly, I don't think. Yeah, I've heard that there's a price point. But at the same time, I don't think that uh, quality of system, there's really. Everyone makes a a deal out of the 1080, like, conundrum. Mm -hmm. But I don't. I don't, I don't think that's what's making gamers' minds up. I think that's just another one of those us versus them situations. Yep. You think it's also a matter of visibility? Like, that this exists pretty much everywhere, but you only see it complained about in the Call of Duty that sells a bajillion fucking games and the <laughs> Mario Kart that sells a bajillion games because it's yeah. the most popular. Well, that's interesting yeah. because every Dynasty Warrior game since Dynasty Warriors 2 has essentially been the exact same game. Yeah, but they don't sell that many. But the f- people that play those games love them. But they are—they are basically the exact same game, mm-hmm. and they're gonna. And but you don't hear people run around and just bash Dynasty Warriors. I mean, if you search, I'm sure you can find people say, "Oh, it's repetitive, it's button mashing, it's whatever." Yeah. But it is not the default. I'm gonna complain about game repetition, Dynasty. Warriors. Right. You, you hear that a lot about like Madden. You hear that it's repetitive. You know mm-hmm. that. It's the same every time. You hear that often about Call of Duty. You're right, but you don't hear that about Dynasty Warriors. Right. Why innovate if you make all the money? Every you know what? They, they time. don't need to. Yeah. You know, and and yeah. to be honest, um, I mean, like if if I'm gonna throw my two cents in on on the Forza franchise, I kind of wish they had released the same game. They took away a lot of features that they had previously. That if those would have been in there, Forza Five would have been a a different story. I would, I don't, it's not a bad game. It's listen, just why take the step backwards. Yeah. I would love to have set that sit sit down at some point in the future with like the head of Xbox the, at the uh, Xbox One at the time of its development and say why did you do the party chat differently? But wh- who was complaining about it? Yeah, yeah. What what made you decide? You had this system that everybody was comfortable with <clears throat> and, and happy with, approved of over, I'll over I'll your you, competitors. I'll tell you what probably happened. 
was that the uh, overall head of Microsoft was probably pushing the, the unification of their systems with Skype and Link and all of their different <clears throat> Outlook and all of that. They wanted that to use the same system. And Xbox Live is over here in its own party chat. And I think they wanted to integrate that with more with Skype. And so they created this other system probably to talk to those other servers oh, and ended up breaking it. That's, yeah, honestly, okay, that's, yeah. that's actually, if, you, if they had come out and, and said, said the that. reason this is different is because we're trying to make this a cross-platform integrated yeah. uh, chat system. Everyone would have been like, "Oh, that's really cool." Except for, except for it isn't. Yeah, right? you can't. Yes, yes. You, you no. can't say. Yeah. Uh, nope. I want to open an Xbox party chat with somebody that's on Skype. Or on isn't MSN, you have to open your Skype yeah. chat to do it. We're yeah. a totally different app. Yeah. yeah. You yes, know, exactly. what I mean? and they didn't add any features to party chat yeah. that you didn't have before. In fact, if anything, they should have probably added more people or made it. So if you like, I understand if you had. 32 people in a chat lobby, that's going to be insane. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, everybody trying to talk over each other. It's rough when you get eight people. But I think one of the things they could have done with that, if they were going to add features, was like, you know, add more people, but select whoever owns the party could set who's who's uh, able to talk. But uh, uh, Kyle, didn't... you play enough Battlefield 4 to kill several small villages in Vietnam. Only <laughs> 880 <laughs> hours currently. <laughs> But oh that game, gosh. that game, you had all, very... All my assault rifles are maxed. Uh, almost all the submachine guns, dude. Oh, um, that's terrifying. Damn. All those dog tags. You had a very <laughs> clear standard for how that game should appear to be in Battlefield 3. Mm -hmm. It had been honed over a lot of time played, and they released Battlefield 4, and it was totally broken. In yeah. every way, shape, and form, yes, it was broken. And so that's... It's Across it, all platforms, really. Yes, uh, and, but you know, but, so that's what's interesting is that you didn't really have Call of Duty players saying, ha ha, look at you silly Battlefield players. No. Uh, yeah, I didn't really ever hear that. No, I didn't either. I mean, there was, they, the, everybody in the games industry was saying, you know, oh, this is broken. This they were, is and broken. they were, it was sad. Yeah. It wasn't mocking. I never heard anybody mock mm -hmm. uh, broken Battlefield. That Battlefield, was, Battlefield fanatics mocked Battlefield. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's a little bit like, me making fun of Ryan. I do it in the best fun. <laughs> you get so close enough fanatic? that you can... Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. I see what you're saying, though. Because yeah. you feel close you can, enough that you, you, you can, know you the critiques. Up, and you, you can beat up your own brother, but if somebody else messes with your brother, you're going to beat their ass. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Except for your brother. You, yeah. Everybody picks on him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that brother. Right. All right. So... I should have said Nate's <laughs> Sorry, Jack. He's not, not here. Yeah, he's not here to defend himself. You guys can pick on him. Honestly, probably do not need permission. Yeah, We've been but... doing it for like twenty years. <laughs> Just saying, you guys can pick on him. Now. Just saying. You got Nate's, I'll Nate's allow stamp it. of approval. Yep, <laughs> mushroom <laughs> stamp <laughs> approval. Whoa. <laughs> okay, on that bombshell, I think we're going to move to topic two. All right. So on on the. I guess it, it's a decent segue in, but the... How is you, Mushroom Stamp a decent segue? No, no, no. <laughs> we were Mario on the Kart. topic. Mario Kart! Yeah, Mario Kart. Yes. We were on the topic of, of games that that eventually started feeling repetitive, but still sell a lot of titles, and yeah. they've been around a long time. So, I guess the question is, in 15 years from now, what's going to be timeless? Nate, you brought up this topic, and do you, you want to put a little more sure, pizzazz sure, on, the, sure. on the intro and description of this? Absolutely. So, you know, I, I flash flashback 15 to 20 years ago, I was playing a little game called Street Fighter 2. Well, I think Super Street Fighter 2 at the time. Um, well, there was like a million iterations on the Super Nintendo, but um, not quite a million, but there was a lot of them. And, you know, I just recently played Super Street Fighter 4 with, uh, you know, with my girlfriend's brother a younger brother and i was like wow this is really surreal the fact that you know 20 years ago i was doing the same thing and here i am 20 years later playing a game that was re-released or not really re-released but updated and brought into the next generation of consoles and everything so uh it got me thinking like what from our current generation of games that we're playing is going to be around in 15 to 20 years you know what what do you think is timeless you know to me assassin's creed maybe although you know, a lot of people are kind of getting tired of the, the formula. That I was going to say, years. actually, I think Assassin's Creed in its current form won't exist. Yeah. I think it could exist after it has a dead period and then undergoes a reboot. 
Yeah. Um, it's getting too many too many iterations over. Well, and at some point, you've gone everywhere interesting historically. Yeah. And uh, that's gonna be a long time, though. But I agree. I think it's because not, most people not are if get they bored keep the up formula. the release schedule that they've said they want to have. They want yearly releases. They're they're just gonna stick to it. Yeah. yeah. This this year too. <laughs> Yeah, two this year. Yeah, it, we're so we're at the point now. We're not talking about um, like a Mass Effect situation where I think they could do another trilogy over a decade, yeah, and then to do another trilogy over another decade, and mm-hmm. essentially just the Star Wars method kind of. Yeah, it's essentially except for hopefully without George Lucas within <laughs> a thousand meters of that building. Well, I would hope so. It's Mass Effect. No yeah, Star Wars. that doesn't matter. He's got a stupid amount of money now since he <laughs> trolled his way through Disney. Um, so. Yeah, so so there are the the one franchise that I absolutely think will exist is Madden, because uh, it's, it's always going to be football. Football, football as long as football. Let's yeah. put it this way: if there is a yearly hockey game, there is going to be a yearly football game every year. That game will exist. It is the one, and all they will do is continue to release the new rosters with tweaks to the game. That's true. Uh, the sports franchises will probably forever be around. Yeah. So what you're saying is football never changes. No. <laughs> football. Football never changes. If we could get another Fallout game, maybe I would say that would exist. Madden and Fallout combined together. Now, this needs to happen. I could see that. Absolutely. You know they'll use that, too, that tagline. I bet you. I want a, I want a super mutant lineman. That's what I was just about to say. The super mutant <laughs> line. Yes. Yeah. Oh, man. And a cool quarterback, because, I mean, if he gets injured, I mean, yeah. you just reattach was the that, bar. Was that Mutant right, Hockey League? That you're Mutant talking League about? Hockey. Mutant League Hockey. But they had Which they brought football. back. That was so that was awesome. Mutant League football yes. has been brought back. That's the one thing I was going to ask is, when you say, what's going to be timeless? Yeah. It's, well, how do you define timeless? Because we're bringing back all sorts of franchises, mm-hmm. and basically they're the exact same games just released now as indie games. Oh, that's true. And they're going to do the exact same thing 15, 25 years from now. Now, when you say timeless, is it something that everybody remembers back to and harkens back to and goes, man, that game was unbelievable for the time, but could never really be redone in modern day standards? Yeah. Say GoldenEye? Like everybody yeah. remembers GoldenEye. They've tried to redo it a couple it of times. Not, and never it's caught. never going to work because it was completely unique for the time. I'm going to say, you want a timeless game 25, 30 years from now? Portal. Ooh. Portal is a timeless game. Yeah, that's, that's, a, good, that's a good point. I that one is that. completely unique. It has not sold out to the one millionth iteration of Portal Modern Warfare Advanced <laughs> Warfighter number 7 Mark II. P- Portal 7.0. It, it is a well-known yeah. fact that you can't get a third Valve game. No. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That is very true. <laughs> Team Fortress 3? No. 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 Half-Life 3? No. Oh, no, I heard that was confirmed. Yeah, oh, yeah, it always yeah. is, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, Just man. like Duke Nukem. Oh, crap, I wish they hadn't done that. That's oh, funny that you brought yeah. it up, because that's actually the one game I would say. You want a game that's not timeless? Duke Nukem. Duke Nukem. Yeah, it because was a product of its time. It was a product of its time, and our age as gamers, and kind of the humor of that... It can never exist as it it's was. It's like the action hero of the 80s, it's, right? You know, it's not the same, although Expendables proves know. that that can kind of come back around. It's the video game version of Blazing Saddles. <laughs> <Good point. laughs> yeah, you yeah. can't make those jokes you anymore. You can't make right. it anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah you you're can't right. do it. Yeah. It's very true. When it came out, you were like, this is so offensive, it's hilarious. You can't make Shake that it, anymore. Baby. Yeah. Shake it. Now, you have to forgive me. I'm not a PC gamer, but is Quake still around? No. Quake no. was huge. Yeah. How about Unreal Tournament? Dead. Yeah. You don't really hear people Quake maybe pining for a little bit, but I never hear anybody going, man, whatever happened to Unreal Tournament, we should totally bring that back. Yeah. That was in... Actually, they've tried a couple of times. They did Unreal Tournament 3, and that came out in 2007. The engine, the engine keeps getting iterations, and it's, yeah. it's the basis for actually a lot of games, but... Unreal they, they, they did the, uh, uh, with this next generation of the Unreal Engine, they're basically like, hey guys, make your own game. You know, I mean, that's yeah. right. That's how they they've been doing that ahead. actually they, since the first Unreal, yeah, Unreal Engine. Engine. Yeah, so I mean, really, we're not. Yeah, that that specific game will probably not exist again. I was gonna say, yeah, Epic Epic <clears> has kind of <throat> changed themselves from being a game developer more to an engine developer because they made, they made Gears of War and then they, um, I think they sold. Gears of War off to make uh, to another company. That's another game I don't think is going to be timeless. No, either. Gears of War. I, I think I think 
I yeah, think it's, it's kind of they, they, they had yeah. their uh, their time frame uh-huh. there, yeah. and yeah, we're moving on. You know, I I hate to say it, but probably just as a factor of their own repetitiveness. Halo. No, I think we're we're gonna see Mario, Donkey Kong, and Zelda games until we die. Uh, or until Nintendo or until runs out of money. I wouldn't I say Donkey Nintendo Kong. Dies. You know or what we won't say until we die? Ocean. Metroid. Mm-hmm. Yes, because that never sells as much. They don't that make very many Metroid games anymore. That is odd. It's, they're, they're really good games, and they generally have better storylines than any of the other Nintendo, Nintendo titles. games. Yep, and they don't make them as often. Now, there's a timeless game for you. Metroid. You think to back to the first Metroid on NES, and that was absolutely groundbreaking. Yep. Yeah. And you're seeing the death of a franchise as we speak. Yep. That will be a timeless game in 20 to 25 years. Hmm. The hmm. problem is we have to find the Metroid of our era, which... Through the glasses of current, what we see in our current every day, yeah. it's going to be very difficult to determine. That's why I said Portal is the only one that really sticks out. Yeah, Portal's an interesting one because yeah. it doesn't have to be good. <laughs> what was that? Who's bowling in here? <laughs> um, Portal's an interesting one because graphics could be totally redone and yet the feel would remain the same. Mm-hmm. As opposed to, you can't really do... Because first-person shooters advance so much beyond um, beyond GoldenEye that even when you go back and play GoldenEye, you're like, hmm, this doesn't it doesn't feel right either. This is I, I said I went I went and played Half Life Two recently, and it was like, man, I really feel like I'm taking a step back. And you were, and I was, yeah. but at the and, time, but at the it, time was it was a huge step forward, leap yeah. forward. Yeah. yeah. Um, so another one I was thinking Grand Theft Autos. Uh, those games, because those games are not about uh, the gameplay, so to speak. They're about the atmosphere. Sto- I mean, not the story in the uh, like uh, drama sense, but the story right. the in goofiness. the going out and committing crimes yeah. and the comedy. And yeah, so <clears throat> and I think that franchise can exist for as long as Rockstar wants to make them. Yeah, and creates that atmosphere exactly because they do it with a lot of their games. The one I can think of that I don't know if it'll be timeless, but probably will still exist. Are the Lego games? Ooh, because they pretty much continue to make them, and as long as there are <laughs> a good movies point. to make them, yes, yeah. yeah, they you mean as long them. as there's anything that you can turn into Lego, which is well mm, uh, everything. Anything, yeah. Yeah. That's what we need. We need Lego Mario Kart. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I need to patent this idea now before this goes off, so I can make my I Lego fortune. Kart. I guarantee that. Selling it. I guarantee you're gonna patent Lego Mario Kart. <laughs> Don't ask me these questions. It's a great idea. <laughs> There's question marks and then there's profit. <laughs> it's like I don't know. Uh, it's, 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 it's the umbrella corporation yeah. model of running a corporation. Yes. Evil question mark question mark question mark profits. Profit. Yes. <laughs> I'll make zombies and zombies will make me money, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> You're totally approved for your one billion dollar loan. <laughs> That's one that I might have said would have still been around. Any like if I if I had gone back ten years and said what. What games do you think we'll, we'll still be seeing? That's true. I might have said Resident Evil because it was if so... it wasn't for five. I, but the yeah, zombie thing saying, has been so played Except out. for what happens with everything is that we get... Yeah, exactly. We get, like, vampires played out, zombies played out, werewolves played out, and they go away, and, and then, then they, come, they back. come back. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so zombies is right now... On... On the outs. Oh, well, working its way that direction. Walking, I mean, Walking Dead is Walking still super Dead, popular. Walking Dead, because it's not about zombies, it's about survival, um, will will be, I think, the last zombie. Like, we got we have zombie freaking romance stories now. Yeah. Like, I just want to chop <clears throat> that. It, it's on its way out. But yeah. Resident Evil's not a game about zombies. It's an adventure game at its core. Yeah, if but you you look at the entire horror, thing right? is, you know? is about it's an adventure horror. game. Yeah, they say yeah. survival, but it's really adventure. I mean, if you compare Tomb Raider to Resident Evil, yeah. minus boobs and zombies. Well, there's boobs in Resident Evil too. They're yeah, yeah, but they're they not nearly boobs, as yeah. large. Well, so were Lara Croft in the early days, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but if you look at the two of them, if you if you <clears throat> eliminate those factors, they're both adventure games. Mm-hmm. Eliminate both those factors, and they're not fun anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the whole uh, reason I played that game. Uh, yeah. If you eliminate zombies, it's Pitfall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. There's a timeless game. <laughs> 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 
Ah, pitfall. Yeah, indeed. many an hour wasted. So I don't know. Do you, Chris? You haven't mentioned. Uh, you haven't mentioned your your timeless game. What do you think? Well, I said the Lego games. I, as far as like an actual game, I think the the issue with thinking of a timeless game is when you call it timeless now, you think, oh, I played that game when I was five, six, seven in my early formative years. So you kind of have to look at what kids are playing now at five, six, and seven. I don't know what those games are, but they're probably terrible because they're being played by five and six and seven. Call of say, Duty. Call of Duty. Say Call of Duty. Yeah. 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 Or stuff on, the, stuff on the iPad, right? And at some point, mm. you know what's going to be a timeless game? Doing your mom. Because all the kids are doing it these days. Apparently. <laughs> at least that's Whoa. what I'm being told. <laughs> <laughs> on, on the Xbox Live. Okay, yeah. is Candy Crush... <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering where I was going. You didn't pick that up. <laughs> Chris, I cracked with you there. Sorry. I didn't think you were. I was actually <laughs> suggesting. I was like, I'm like Nate. Everybody, everybody's like, what? What? Wait. What are you talking about? I'm like, you're... how? You went from like... five and six year old to Call of Duty doing your mom. It was a clear okay. progression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We're, we're tracking. Yeah. Xbox, not screwing around with people on Xbox Live. That's going to be timeless. Uh, uh, are you Candy Crush going to be timeless? I hope to God. I don't know. No, it's, it's, it's like Kim the jewel, Kardashian right? World Police or whatever makes, <laughs> makes like seven million a day or something like I, that. You know that game is actually huge. It, I is. Don't it makes a it. massive amount of money. The thing is, though, like most of the smartphone games are throwaway enough that I don't know that they'll be timeless. No, yeah, they just it's really it's no different than say fashion. Whereas you have fashion, 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 and there are certain timeless pieces, a little black dress, <clears throat> things like that. Yeah. But bell most bottoms. of most of fa- most of fashion is or most smartphone games are equivalent to bell bottoms. Right. Yeah. Right. They fall out of fashion, and you don't ever touch them again. And you mock it. it you know, twenty. Everyone's wearing it in you know nineteen sixty seven, and then by nineteen eighty seven, people are like Haha, bell bottoms with their single glove and red sequin jacket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like like Faffy Bird. Flappy bird. <laughs> right? Which one? Flappy. That maybe the other thing that, that kind of contributes to smartphones not being like timeless at all is that they are so easily clonable that there are eight thousand Flappy Bird clones. Yeah. That it's like the hell cares? Yeah. You, you can you play it. You get tired of it. You pick another one. You play it. You get tired of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not going to hang around. Disposable because... experiences because they're only two dollars. Right. right? Are you telling me that you do not play Mafia Wars for the story? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what about like a what about a game like Destiny? Right? You think is ah, so it's tough? Way to know. too early to say. Okay, so WoW like, is yeah. Kind World of timeless. Warcraft is sort of timeless. It's still around. They're probably gonna. It's probably gonna be re released as World of Warcraft two in the future. I mean Blizzard would probably do something like that though. I mean they just continue will, to we'll update see, it. We will see. It's possible that a game like that might spend itself into oblivion on its one big shot and then it can't repeat it. Hmm. You know what I mean? Because it built with every progression and then World of Warcraft practically went viral. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like how many people were playing it was ridiculous. It's true. And We've kind of moved past the MMO stage. When World of Warcraft came out, it was actually towards the tail end of the of MMO. Type of MMO right it is under, true. Yeah. We're basically MMOs are yeah, basically out of fashion as a platformer is right now. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, it's uh, the, the Destiny. If you've played the beta, is trying to be a hybrid. Was more FPS than it was MMO. Oh, wait, way much, way, way more, more, maybe too much more, but to be seen. Yeah. I was hoping for a little bit more RPG element, but that's getting us a little bit off tangent of timeless. But yeah. but the point is, you can't tell until the game has been out for at least five years to know what critical reception is. How about Titanfall? I'm going to actually say no on that, uh, simply because I feel like Titanfall is Call of Duty with mechs in a good way. Like I mean yeah. that as a compliment. Yeah. It's very fast paced. Who doesn't love mechs? You're evil if you don't. Uh, just <laughs> and we fight you with yeah. <laughs> uh Yeah, so it is good, but it actually, it's one of those things where I think it just, it does its thing, mm-hmm. and we might get a sequel, but it's not going to be something that, let's put it this way, I think that if that had come out two years from now, it wouldn't have been quite as big of a deal as it was when it came out now, and basically, if you wanted to play your Xbox One, you had to have Titanfall. Yeah. Because you had like six games. 
right. not quite that bad, but you know, it was yeah, bad. it's a lot la- being a launch game. All right, I'll, I'll throw game. this last one out before we move on. But uh, what do you think about Final Fantasy? Because just... they change the story every flipping time. I feel, but I feel like Final Fantasy has. Um, Jumped the shark. Cashed it. <laughs> yes, jumped the shark has cashed in its franchise relevancy at this point. I will play Final Fantasy VI <clears throat> 50 years from now. Yes. Absolutely will. Yep. Amazing game. Yep. Perfect game uh, as it is right now. I don't want anything else from it. But I don't think it can ever recapture that magic. Yeah. I think the, I think it was a... But they did, the, the they did it a couple of times. Seven, right? seven so was that, pretty good. Seven. In the U.S., <laughs> in the U.S., what was Final Fantasy two, which was four, yeah, and then Final Fantasy three, which, which was six, six. Yeah. which is those of us that are you know in the know no. call it <laughs> Japanese game snobs. <laughs> and then there was, <laughs> and then there was Final Fantasy seven, which they they did it again, right? And, and apparently eight was actually from every account that I've heard, it's pretty. It good. was a better game. Seven. seven, as far as the game but the mechanics. story was but it, but again it didn't quite have the magic that seven had seven engrossed everybody because it was the it was the leap from Nintendo to a new platform and sort of launched the PlayStations. Well, here's a question on Final Fantasy: Who played eight here? How many people? One. Yeah, we got one who played it to completion. How about seven? Who played seven to completion? Oh yeah. Okay, four so, five, so we got four, four out of five, five yeah. played seven to completion. Okay, here's the issue for me. Because I had watched somebody play, I think it was Final Fantasy VIII, for yeah. quite some time. I can sum up the story for two and three right now. Seven is a little bit fuzzy, and I even played that one earlier. But eight was completely random, off the charts. Yeah. I mean, there's RPG, there's JRPG, and then there's JJJJJRPG. JJ <laughs> Abrams RPG. Yes. <laughs> What's in Lens the box? flare What's with a story. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> But I'll tell you what, it's after like Final WTF. Fantasy VII, they've come up with it. Nobody knows what the story is. No. You'll WTF have to write RPG. You the synopsis, yeah. and you'll have to have cliff notes to understand them. <laughs> <laughs> it's impossible to understand. Is it? And I hate to say this, I love Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> Why does he have a robotic metal arm? I don't know. What? <laughs> You know, I'm all about, yeah, combat and stealth and everything else. Wait a minute, now you can deflect bullets with magnetic things and swords and I'm in somebody's bowels in the friggin' I forget which one that was, where there's some flashback where you're fighting mechs with a stinger. Never mind, I won't get onto the topic of that you probably couldn't lock onto a mech with a real stinger, but <laughs> we'll leave that for another time. Oh, I know that from Battlefield and the irritation of damn it, I can't, I've got a stinger and there's a tank! Javelins, however, you can lock onto whatever you want as long as the lights are designated, but those damn stingers. <laughs> Friggin' stingers. Uh, uh, you're right, though. Like, what happened, it, I mean, it, it feels like they strayed from their, their core value of, of being a, a stealth game. You know, what happened to just being a spy? You know it's mean? a good basic story. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to go way off the rails that's to a, still have a good story. That's Just a Japanese keep, thing, I was going to say, is this the Japanese's fault? Yeah. That their, uh, their culture has gone so far off the rails of sense. And con- <laughs> convolution. Yeah, that they can't make a story that was, appeals to Western audiences anymore. Maybe. I would say so. They've lost, <clears throat> they've lost their uh, height. Of the gaming empire that they had, you know, the Western but, RPGs have taken over that. Yeah, but I mean, not I mean, their culture in general. It's just we look at it and we go, "What? I don't get it?" So yeah. basically, you're waiting for Metal Gear Solid Super Kawaii. <laughs> well, Metal Gear Solid, <laughs> either with a, a panty, a dirty color. panty vending machine, or tentacles. <laughs> now they make that one, and I'll buy back into the franchise just for the wow factor. <laughs> Metal Gear Hentai. Oh, yes. No. Three hours of cutscene. Oh yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, I don't mind. This is okay. Uh, <laughs> like, this is a- I don't care that they don't know what they're talking about. Snake, snake, get the vending machine, snake. <laughs> But that's, machine over that is the and... next Metal Gear game. It is going to be just cutscene and uh, what are those quick time quick time quick events? Time quick, quick time yeah. events. No, actually moving your character around, just mashing buttons and cutscenes. 
fantastic. On the plus side, it can be like super cross platform. They can make that one for your phone. <laughs> <laughs> and then they can like cross sell it with those like extended life batteries so you can actually play the game without being you, plugged in. You actually you have to log off the game, log into Netflix to watch the series. <laughs> <laughs> you can continue the quick time of that. Oh my gosh, that's, that's awesome. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, I like this. All right, so speaking of watching movies, as in Metal Gear, but uh, <laughs> we went and saw uh, Guardians of the Galaxy over the weekend. So there's been a lot of hype to this movie. About a year out, they started the hype. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So up recently, they... they if you watch some of the commercials, they were they were touting best Marvel movie ever. That's a lot. You pretty much can't pile on any more hype. Ever. I mean, it's a it, bold statement. Yeah, if if they the only thing better they could have said is best movie you will ever ever see in your life. Not just have seen, but ever will see. You know, I mean, that's the <laughs> only step you can kind of go higher than that with mm-hmm. you know with with staying relevant. But um, I I don't know. I I don't. What are you gonna say? What are you gonna to say to a movie? Are you gonna say it's it's okay? <laughs> it's no, not great, no, no, but no, it's worth say, nine dollars. Say loads of fun, uh, an an action comedic romp. You know, I mean, okay. They, yeah, they have all kinds of things that they. Captain America was uh, two was supposed to be the big Marvel movie this summer. And we've all forgotten that came out, right? That came no, out. Yeah, ever, okay, yeah. Ever, yeah. Uh, and this is probably gonna eclipse it in the second tier spot. Yeah. And personally, totally justifiably, yeah. it is it is uh, not the same type of movie, but I think that in a lot of respects, it is a better movie. Better movie. Hmm. Yeah, I I mean, I think we've got we've got uh, three probably similar opinions on this, and then we've got one <laughs> nice... I want to hear it. I want one nice uh, contrasting view here. You mean wrong. I just want to make it clear. Yeah, yeah, we've got three people that are in right. Ones, <laughs> at least, yeah. yeah. And then somebody that hates fun. <laughs> well, you know what? I'll tell you what. The movie lived up for every single expectation I possibly had for it for a movie with a raccoon, a tree, and some differently colored Human people. For that, it was a fantastic movie. All I heard was colored people. people. <laughs> Let me you. reiterate: <laughs> multicolored people <laughs> in a very prismatic fashion of the color palette. Let me reiterate: this is not helping. <laughs> this is. I'm gonna have to. We're gonna have to come back to you when you when you can calm down your racism. All right. So, Chris, how did you feel? <laughs> How did you feel about Guardians of the Galaxy? Um, I kind of had some high expectations. I think this movie did a really good job of meeting them. It was a good combination of funny points, action points, and soundtrack. Dialogue. Really? Dialogue and soundtrack, yeah. 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 Like, Vin Diesel's dialogue was fantastic. It was, uh, there were some deep moments with Groot. I mean. Yeah. Absolutely. Was probably he reached down and he touched you in ways that you didn't know. Probably would, would tell the authorities about. Didn't that, know Diesel could touch you down there. Wait, that didn't happen to you guys? Is that huh? what? Oh. Did you not buy the uh, special edition? I, no? I'll tell you what. That IMAX 3D was so realistic. <laughs> it's like you were there. It was like the group was there. <laughs> in only the way a tree can be. It, I would say that Vin Diesel's acting chops in this better than Riddick. <laughs> uh yes yeah. so okay well i i was gonna say Groot didn't do a barrel roll but that would actually be a lie Groot did do a barrel roll in the uh explosion scene mm. when he picked up rocket and ran yeah yeah there was you're a right. barrel roll there. you're right there was a barrel roll <laughs> oh god i need to go see it a third time now <laughs> i didn't catch the barrel roll oh my gosh yeah they're they're running out of the collector yeah. yeah, I remember. I remember him picking up Rocket, but I do not remember the barrel roll, and I desperately want to see the barrel roll. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think the movie did a it's really... It's in his contract, really. Must do barrel roll. <laughs> Fast and Furious barrel roll. That's the next yeah. one. <laughs> and do a barrel roll. Yeah. Press zero R twice. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
very specific, Peppy. What's going on? <laughs> I'm just telling you how to do it, in case you didn't know the controls before you got in that R-wing, Fox. <laughs> <laughs> they let anybody fly these things. Right. <laughs> Fox, I know you're a commander, but uh, I pretty much assume you're an idiot. So, so go ahead and just do barrel. <laughs> Never give up. Trust your instinct. <laughs> Not really sure what's wrong with Nate at this point. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, declare that this is it is at least in contention for best Marvel movie. For some people, it might not be the top, but I mean, you'd have to be. This is no secret that it's a it's a sci-fi Marvel movie. So if if that's not your thing and you're more into the superheroes, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's it isn't gonna feel the yeah. same in yeah. that respect. You know what's really good in it? Space. Yeah, the space. space yeah, the space was really good. The <clears throat> action sequences, yeah. You didn't Did you you didn't see You the didn't film, end did up you? seeing this, did you? I didn't see the movie. <laughs> oh <laughs> Nate, you did not properly do your homework for this segment. I'm sorry. Blasphema. I'm sorry. Alright. Um, yeah, you still kind of got a little bit of superhero with some of the yeah. aliens, so yeah. and, and not to not to totally give anything away, but it does it does start to build more of of towards a a Marvel style towards the end. I will say towards the end of the movie, it starts becoming more of that that superhero style. Is it kind of like Farscape or Firefly? Because I've seen both of those, and from the previews, having not seen it, would you? Would you say it's on the same lines as that? Within days, I, I saw the... No, within hours of the first time seeing this, I saw a Firefly comparison. Mm-hmm. And it irritated me because I could compare this movie to probably a dozen <laughs> other movies closer than I could compare it to Serenity slash Firefly. Okay. The only reason that people made that immediate Firefly comparison was because we are so lacking in space opera. Yeah. Right now, that anything that happens in space is like, oh, immediate comparison to everything else that's ever happened in space. space. Yeah. Like, we don't. Uh, what's the great uh, sci fi, and I, I'm, let me rephrase it, what's the great space opera show on television right now? None. None. There are none. Battlestar was the last good one. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. really? Yeah. Yeah. Once that went and off that the was, air, and that was, there was, know, was six was, years ago. Yes. It has been a long time, and we have not really had. Like, we were all really somewhat. I would say somewhat cautiously optimistic about Jupiter Ascending, uh, which was Wachowski Brothers were going to have this movie earlier this year, I believe it was. Yeah. Uh, and then, as it turned out, it's so bad they had to basically stop releasing it. Yeah. Uh, but and the reason we were all excited for that was because <clears throat> new sci-fi universe. Right. Yeah. You know? And I think that even, like, Riddick, like, as... You kind of questionable as that movie was. You wanted it so bad to be good just because there is such a desert of and sci-fi. Do you out mind there if right I interject now. for a moment? Yes. No, go for it. I have no idea what the backstory <laughs> of Guardians of the Galaxy is. I never read the comics or anything anywhere related to it. I never saw Firefly before I saw Serenity. The big difference between the two is in Serenity, I was emotionally involved with the characters. Hmm. Huh. Except, of course, for Groot. I mean, well, that was more than emotional. I was physically involved with the uh, 3D IMAX. But we won't get into that. Anyways. I am in Groot. Yes, <laughs> you are. <laughs> Anyways, the big thing is that in Serenity, or, yeah, Serenity, I was emotionally involved with the characters whenever the pilot, I can't remember his name because I have a terrible memory one, <laughs> but whenever he eats it, I was like, that, spoiler alert, <laughs> freaking, yeah, if you have not seen Serenity by now, yeah. you need to, no, like, listen, I don't know, that was like crawl out of your time. I understand. <laughs> but I understand. Just saying, what I hear is, I can't emotionally connect with colored people. That's <laughs> I swear to God. Anyways, let me finish my point, okay? You can harass me afterwards. Anyways, I understood the story behind Serenity. I had no idea what the backstory on Guardians of the Galaxy was. It, was, except was it because Serenity, all the people were white? <laughs> the Reaver! No, they were not! They were and not. there was that <laughs> creature dude! I'm just messing with you. Who, Go. who, for the record, I was moderately emotionally connected to Somewhat in the movie. I'm irritated that you are all forgetting Mal's second in command. I know. His name completely escapes me. Zoe. Zoe. Zoe, yeah, you forgot Zoe. But, anyways, I'm just saying, I was emotionally involved with the characters, I understood the backstory. I understood everything about the movie. Guardians of the Galaxy, what I got out of it was, 
the backstory, there wasn't much on these characters at all. And mm. it was, these people are good, these people are evil, good beats evil, the end. That is because such a, like, dumb. bastardized <laughs> reading of that movie. Like, okay, so you have Star-Lord, who is a human, at least we know him to be human at this moment, uh, that, yes. that has was abducted from Earth and became essentially a space pirate. Cool. Space pirates. You like those, because you like Serenity. And he's, he's got mommy issues. All right. Then we have the green chick. And the green chick is Thanos' daughter on loan to the big bad of the movie. And she's pissed because Thanos basically was a bad dad. <clears throat> and this guy Slaughter that she's on loan to is an evil dude. Okay? So that's her backstory. Then you have two bounty hunters. They don't need a backstory. They're the Jane in Serenity. Jane Han doesn't Solo. have a backstory. Han Solo didn't need a backstory. Exactly. Han and Chewie, they're just, they're just space cowboys. Okay? Right. What do, you, what do you want? So that's what the tree and the raccoon are. And... If you can't get behind Ranger Rick, I don't know who. If I can't Ranger get behind Rick. a raccoon and grab on. I don't know who you can grab on. And then and then grab blue, hold of then that. blue guy with red tattoos. Drax. Yes, <laughs> it's Batista. I, I have Batista. to okay. I, I could give them names, but Kyle only stands the colors. Yes. So <laughs> I have to go that way. Thank you. Yes. The, the, this podcast so, brought to you by racism. I'm just I'm just saying that you know what? It's okay. He liked red tail. Oh, okay. Riddick. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> it's actually well, true. I'm not really going like that into that. No. <laughs> I no. saw pieces of that movie, and frankly, I despised it. But there was an HBO film done about the Tuskegee Airmen, which is absolutely fantastic. Because so. it had less uh, George Lucas involved. That's really yeah, the whatever it is. Whatever. Anyways, but what I'm going to say is... The point I mean is that there's more story there, there's more backstory there, there's more depth to the characters there then I think you're giving credit. And I think I do think that you have a hang-up because of the overly sci-fi nature. I know that uh, there are people that can't get past non-humanoids. That it just, when they see them on screen, it's difficult for them to then access... And connect <clears throat> with that and, Yes, exactly. Or, or just the film and the movie, the TV show in general. I think yep. Farscape didn't do as well, probably, as it should have. Because of that. Because of the Muppet aspect yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah. No, there was a lot of criticism on that. I just want to say that if you have a spectrum from Star Wars at one end and Chronicles of Riddick on the other end, that serenity in that spectrum is closer to Star Wars. Yep. And Guardians of the Galaxy is closer to Chronicles of Riddick. Whoa. It's whoa. action. It's First of all, action you're themed. talking about Chronicles of Riddick, which is not the same as Riddick. I know. I was Riddick. about to be offended. And Chronicles oh, okay. of Riddick Excuse is a, is me. A, I, yes. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Excuse me. But you understand what I'm saying. One's more action-oriented, the other one's more story-oriented. And if Wars, you like action, you're that's good. Star Wars has a weak plot. Yeah, it does. Star Wars 4 has a weak plot. Now, Star Wars 5 does not. That is a very solid plot movie. But Star Wars 4 is basically... Uh, Farmer discovers it's hero's journey. Yes, it's hero's journey it, in a nutshell. It is all so, the way through. It is so completely basic. concur if yeah. you take three on its own merits. Or four, excuse me. No, I'm I'm not even going to speak of the first three. <laughs> what? Whoa, there were th there were there were three, three before that. Um, maybe in an alternate reality or something. Is this the same reality where there's a Matrix sequel? <laughs> is anything oh, beyond the first Matrix? What? <laughs> probably so. Okay. Probably so. Yeah. All right. Good thing we made through the multiverse, you guys. So Kyle's Kyle's point here could have been better for you, and you think it was mostly down to you didn't have enough emotional connection. Did you want it to stick around the characters longer and figure out what their backstory was more before it got into the jokes and and other plot lines that the the movie went on? Call me gay. I like to have a gay. more. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I like to have more story to my movies. I like to be emotionally involved in the characters. <clears throat> I like the backstory to be fleshed out a little bit more. And I think they could have done a better job with that in Guardians of the Galaxy. But as an action movie, it's great. They they took five characters and an entire universe that we basically knew nothing about. And I think they built up more there than any sci-fi movie has done. At least in modern maybe, time. I'll, wait, maybe let me give them some... some potential credibility on this in that because the movie came off as kind of sarcastic and jokey and whatnot, some of the more serious plot lines you maybe <laughs> took with a grain of salt, like Drax. 
Did you take his backstory where he needed revenge against the Kree? Did you did you take that completely seriously when his character was was kind of funny and how he interpreted everything literally as opposed you know what I mean does that take away from some of that as opposed to in Star Wars they weren't trying to crack jokes they weren't trying to be sarcastic or funny or whatever and so you took it with a more serious tone although I still don't get how then in Serenity that you know what I mean you know, that's interesting actually because uh one of the reasons that episode one sucked so much was because they tried to make stupid jokes. They put Jar Jar Binks in. They had silly little antics with the pod racing. Mm-hmm. It was the best part of that they movie. They were just bad jokes. That's all. <clears throat> is the ending credits? It's Darth Maul. I was going to say, oh. the, the final lightsaber yeah, battle. That was about it. Maul. That's, yeah. that's, that's, like, that's, that's the only worthy thing in that movie. Yep. I was going to say, I think, I think a good majority of people would actually agree with that. I've seen, because there's been like the Topher Grace recut, and I'm pretty sure it actually starts at the final, like the lightsaber duel at the end of the first movie. That is where it begins wow. and goes forward from there with its recut. But as far as Guardians go, I have to completely disagree. They took almost every single character and had them work through their issues with their own backstory in the course of the movie. Rocket has the breakdown. Drax has losing. He deals with his <clears throat> issues. Deals with his loss. Yeah. Gamora, I mean, kind of deals with her issues, kind of puts them out there. Uh, Star-Lord is just kind of actively dealing with his own issues. And he does, he, end, does, he, deals he does at it. the end have the uh, recovery from his moment of loss. They're yeah. all losers, remember. Right, right. Just joke from the movie. We'll get and, and to a certain extent, you could probably th- like work in some way to say that Groot Absolutely evolved. Absolutely does as a character. Right. Yes. He he goes from being just Rocket's bodyguard to something just a more. dumb tree. He gains a letter to his vocab. Gains a word to his vocabulary. Oh, That's really? all I'm telling you. Yeah. Right. A little bit of a what we call that a teaser. <laughs> teaser. Teaser. Yeah. He doesn't yeah. curse, which would have been hilarious. What? I am fucking <laughs> Groot. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah. See, this is why I don't write movies. <laughs> Because <laughs> that would have been the word he yes, would. Yes, I would. So yeah, so to take five characters and have them all go through their own issues in the course of the movie without having built any backstory, to me is impressive. Get it, c- compress it all into one movie and not have it drag on forever. I don't feel like that movie dragged at all. No, like it no. kept it kept moving. Mm-hmm. So. All right, so I would say my recommendation, go see Guardians of the Galaxy. It lives up to, I, in my opinion, all of the hype. Because it, it, for me, it was the best Marvel movie. I like it better than... Best movie you saw this summer? Yeah. Yeah? Best movie you saw this summer? Like, I, I think, uh, I'm not sure who, I, I can't remember. I think we talked about this, uh, Ryan and I, off mic, um, that Captain America 2... If you are into espionage, serious stories is a better movie. Okay? Yeah, if the, you and, are, and the, I think there's are, there's three Marvel yeah. movies you're really comparing here. Yeah, Avengers, Guardians, Avengers, yeah, Avengers and and Winter yes. Soldier. This is and all three are very different stories, and all three would compete depending on how you feel that morning when you wake up. If you want sci-fi and you want fun, you are going to go see Guardians of the Galaxy. If you want a serious story, That's you're probably going to go see Captain America Two. If you want a Team up kind of buddy movie. Bombastic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I would say I have not bought a movie on DVD in several years. What's a DVD? Or Blu ray, whatever the hell they call it. Whatever they're killing. What are they killing? The kids, not the kids. Whatever <laughs> like, my grandparents you're like, call you're it. Like, I've not burned a CD I, in a long time. I I'm going to go ahead and. I have not bought anything on VHS in at least two years. Beta Max. When can I get Guardians on Laserdisc? <laughs> For the high quality. Yes. <laughs> or that PSP disc. Those like the little UAPs. Oh, yeah. oh, oh yeah. man. I, I will be buying this in some format or another when it comes out. Wow. Bold statement. Wow. Yeah. Nate, what did you... Th- ah, never mind. You didn't see it. No, what, what, about, what about me? Okay, what do you think? What's your, what's now, your recommendation? What are you saying? Best movie of the summer. <laughs> You said, is it the best movie of the summer or best yep. movie of the year so far? Okay. Which how, one? How, I said best movie of the summer. Best okay. movie Address, of the summer? Address both. Yes, because it's the only movie I've seen and... <laughs> <laughs> this summer. This summer, let me reiterate. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only movie I've seen. 
Yeah. It was also the worst movie of this summer. <laughs> yeah. I mean, by that I metric, did not say it was the worst movie. <laughs> I said it's good in certain respects. It's not what I was anticipating. It did not live up well. I guess what I kind of your, hold on. What were your expectations? Just so we could see if there's somebody out there that would have had your expectations. You make excellent. You make an excellent observation with Winter Soldier. I prefer Winter Soldier much more than Guardians of the Galaxy because I think they did a lot more story oriented things. There now, was also a movie that led up to that one as well. That also helps. But yeah. even if you take it in a, by itself, I think it still does a better job Which, with story. Even Captain America 1 probably isn't such a bad thing. They yeah. oh. needed to do that. <laughs> oh my lord, did they save that franchise, let me say. Yeah. But best movie of the summer, yes. Best movie of the year, no. What's your best movie of the year? Um, I cannot remember the name of it because there's so many of them that oh, are similar. That obviously, it was amazing. The ones with the Navy SEALs. Lone, oh, not Lone Survivor. Lone Survivor, Lone Survivor, yeah. Yeah. Lone Survivor is by it far, came out January. hands down, right. picks the crap out of Guardians of the Galaxy. That was a good movie. I it is by that. far a better movie. But for the summer, yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy is the best <clears throat> movie of the summer. You are correct. Okay. Right. So, so it makes sense. It makes more sense now. Yes. Definitely go see that. Staunton, you reiterate the same recommendation here? Just I would simply be repeating the same recommendation that if you like sci fi, you should go see this movie. If you like kind of summer blockbusters, you should go see this movie. If uh, you, you know, unless you're a sadist, if go you, see this movie. If you like or get touch by racist. If you get. <laughs> if you're a dendrophiliac, I was gonna say, it's a fantastic if you like experience in 3D IMAX. <laughs> I will say, the only person that I would tell not to go see this movie is somebody that does not like puppet sci fi. If you can't get past the raccoon and the tree and the colored people and whatever, <laughs> and no, no, if you can't get past that, just don't go see it. Yeah, you know, I would say it. still try to catch it because you may turn out you like it. But just heads up, you will have to deal with the fact that there are going to be main characters that are not humanoid. Right. All right, guys. Well, I think that pretty much wraps it up for episode 24 here. Kyle, thanks for joining us on our... Uh, on our adventure through this and <laughs> blasting the racism through the <laughs> My pleasure. Anytime I want to no, get completely berated really. and browbeat for having an opposite <laughs> opinion as the rest good. of the folks, because I will come here and be berated. Without, 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 we need, without Josh here, we were much more tolerant. So having yes. you here obviously put us right back in the Josh category. I mean, our our hate mailbox has been empty for a long I know, time. We so need now that it'll be stuffed full, we'll have something to do for the next couple of weeks and whatnot. All right, guys, uh, definitely head over to Facebook and check us out. That's facebook.com slash fairly awesome podcast. You can also follow us on Twitter. That's at Fapcast. <laughs> and you can also uh, head over to our, our YouTube channel. Subscribe and like whatever you do. Uh, do watch. We are on the iTunes. If you're listening, if you're not listening, the to listen, iTunes on the <laughs> iTunes. There's the one iTunes. <clears throat> so yeah, guys, thanks for uh, thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Well, are you well, sure that you weren't drinking wild turkey with White Castle? <laughs> oh, <laughs> it was none of that. Uh, this is Kyle's new like danger zone. This is here. this is my new interrogation game. technique. First, this game first started out with buddy fuck drinking, which is a fun little game. You order a drink for your buddy, and your buddy it. orders a drink for you. Oh, you don't fuck him? No. And, <laughs> and it's like, not interested! <laughs> drink until you fuck your buddy. <laughs> what, what, what? <laughs> Come on, here you go. Here, here, this one's on me. What, what are we doing? Buddy fuck drinking. What, what is that? Don't worry about it. Just keep drinking. Don't what? worry until later. Why does my limbs feel really, really heavy in my... F I can't feel my face. Oh, shit. <laughs> I've been real <ripping. laughs> Yeah. Anyway, so the point is, you do shots of wild turkey and eat White Castle. Oh, God, that's <laughs> and a you bad just night. Destroy your colon. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's like colonic. The, the whole the whole point of the game is, whoever vomits first or shits himself first loses. No bathroom breaks. Right? No, oh, no, no, it's breaks. just go, oh, go, go, oh, go. God, dude, that's that's a challenge. <clears throat> I think I would. I think I'd lose. I don't think my colon could last. This is the funny. You saying you got a weak sphincter? When I was like, I, I would just twenty-four. I probably could have handled that. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, no, no, not anymore. That would kill me. Maybe a week to recover. Oh God. Yeah. 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 No. Jesus. Dear doctor, I need all of the stool hardeners <laughs> now, intravenously. <laughs> You're just eating Do cheese, it. like. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a, you've got a snack, a popcorn no, you're, you're bowl, sitting. popcorn bowl filled with tums. <laughs> yeah.
you're sitting on the toilet with a can of Easy Cheese and a handful of Tums and chasing Please the Tums mind. Cheese. Please mind. Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> glue, glue, and cheese, and tongues. 